Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to another CCC Making Meaning lesson. I am Miss Dunbar, and you're Miss Dunbar's Reading Corner that's located here in the home I share with my family in West Seattle. And we, we live very close to the school I normally teach at, Arbor Heights Elementary. Go Junior Seahawks. I want to add a fun fact about myself this uh, today. And that is that during the Global Reading Challenge sponsored by Seattle Public Libraries this year, I challenged myself to read as many books as I could. And I surprised myself by reading all 10. I was really excited to complete them and be able to have those discussions with students in my class. So look those titles up on the Seattle Public School website, Seattle Public Library website, I'm sorry, and um, see how many of those books that you can read yourself. Ourselves. There's a few things that we're going to need before we start our lesson today. One is that you should have a pencil or pen to write with. You'll need these pages from the extension packet that accompanies these lessons. And the pages start with story. And it's an excerpt from Mrs. Buell, um, the story that we read in Hey World, Here I Am. And you'll want the first three sections, and we'll use the next three to, in tomorrow's lesson. The final thing that you'll need is, of course, our turn and talk partner. And remember, that can be um, someone in your home with you now that would like to watch the lesson with you. It can be an imaginary friend that you call on the phone. It can be a stuffed animal. Any of those will do, or you can also do reflection in your own mind. But what, remember, whoever your partner is, the important thing is that you're taking time to reflect on the reading and state your own opinions about it, because that's where your deeper learning will come. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second and let you go gather those materials. The next thing I want to make sure that you're aware of is that I will be asking you to um, state your opinions and reasons why you think that opinion is true. And a good way to state these reasons is to start with the words, the reason I think this is. So the reason I think this is because. So keep that in mind as we do our sharing and reflecting. All right. The focus of our lesson today is, as we've continued through all of Unit 8, is that we're going to continue learning about using important ideas to summarize text. And remember, summarizing is an important reading strategy because it helps you, as the reader, understand a text and be able to communicate about it, either through speaking or through writing. Uh, the first two weeks of the unit were focused on informational text, and this week we're looking at fictional text. And again, we will be um, returning to the excerpt from the book, Hey World, Here I Am, about the fictional, fictional character, Kate Bloomfield, and her experience with Mrs. Buell. So here's the first section of the text that we read yesterday, Mrs. Buell. And um, please have it in front of you as well so you can read along as I read. And while I'm reading, remember, I'd like you to listen for the most important part and any supporting details that you notice. For years and years, for what seems like forever, I've gone to Buell's when I had a dime to spare. It's a run down, not very clean corner grocery store. Kids go there mostly for licorice and bubble gum and jawbreakers and popsicles and comic books and cones. She only has three flavors and the cones taste stale. Still, she'll sell you one scoop for 15 cents. It's not a full scoop, but it's cheaper than anywhere else. 
It's the only place I know where a kid can spend one penny. Mrs. Buell is run down too, and a grouch. She never smiles or asks you how you are. Little kids are scared to go in there alone. We laugh at them, but really, we understand. We felt it too when we were smaller and had to face her towering behind the counter. Okay, as I think back on this passage, the thing that stands out to me the most is that it really is about describing Mrs. Buell. And so I'm going to look at this sentence right here and underline it. Mrs. Buell is run down to and a grouch. Because that really is key to me in this opening passage. I'm thinking about some details. So the reason that Miss um, Buell sounds like rundown and grouchy is one of the reasons is that she never change colors. She never smiles or asks you how you are. That definitely is a supporting detail. Um, that helps me understand how she's run down and a grouch. Another um, supporting detail that I noticed is that it's a run down, not very clean store that she works in. So this helps me understand more about who she is. Another reason I'm thinking that both the store and Mrs. Buell are run down is uh, this detail here really stood out to me. She only has three flavors and the cones taste stale. Boy, that really um, brings to mind something kind of icky, but at the same time, gosh, there is ice cream there and you might wanna go into that store. I'm going to move on to section two now. And I'm going to read it, but then I'm going to ask you to pause the video so you have a chance to think for yourself about what the main idea and details are. So again, be listening as I read for what you think is the main idea and supporting details. <clears throat> she was always the same except that once. I tripped going in and fell and scraped my knee. It hurt so much that I couldn't move for a second. I was winded too, and I had to gasp for breath. I managed not to cry out, but I couldn't keep back the tears. Mrs. Buell is, is big, but she moved like lightning. She hauled a battered wooden chair out from behind the curtain that hung across the back. Then, without a word, she picked me up and sat me down on it. We were alone in the store, but I wasn't afraid. Her hands scooping me up had been work roughened, hard but kind. She still didn't speak. Instead, she took a bit of rag out of her sweater pocket, bent down and wiped the smear of blood off my knee. The rag looked grayish, but her hands were gentle. I think she liked doing it. Then she fetched a band-aid and stuck it on. Does it still sting, she asked, speaking at last in a voice I'd never heard her use before. So pause the video for a moment and go back and reread if you need to. And on your own worksheet, underline the important, um, most important part of this passage and any supporting details, one or two supporting details that you notice. I'm glad you tried doing this on your own. As I was thinking about this, um, I saw actually a couple of important parts. One is that um, Kate really remembered falling and scraping her knee. And that that was something different that kind of started off a chain of events that were a little different in the store. Um, and the reason I thought that this was important was that 
she also mentioned that it hurt so much that she couldn't move for a second. So she really remembered being injured here and she went on to describe a little bit more. You might have um, underlined, I couldn't keep back the tears because that really definitely explained how Kate was feeling at that moment. Another really important part though was how Mrs. Buell responded. How she came around and helped Kate out and actually in the end, let's see, where was that? Towards the bottom, it talks about how she fetched the band-aid and stuck it on. So that was a really important event as well because that was very different than the Mrs. Buell that we met in the first part. The reason why I thought um, this part really stood out is because it, she described taking care of Kate. She wiped the smear of blood off her knee. Um, she used gentle hands. And then she also says, does it still sting? Those were all reasons that helped me think that putting that Band-Aid on was a really important part of this whole um, passage. All right, before we move on to independent practice with section three, I wanted to show you one more strategy that I used to help me remember the important ideas and supporting details. I made notes in the margin as we were reading uh, to help me remember those things. I wrote, Mrs. Buell is grouchy and mean, and she has a rundown store and stale food. I really wanted to remember those details so that when I go to write the summary, I have some of those words ready to go. In section two, I wrote, Kate hurts her knee, Mrs. Buell helps, and helps her out, and then I wrote myself a question, is Mrs. Buell nice? Not so mean. I wanted to remember that again, so I'm ready to write my summary later. Now, you are going to read section three on your own. And with, or, and with your partner, discuss what's important about that section. Write yourself some notes in the margin that tell you, you, tells you what that section is about and underline the important part, the main idea, and any supporting details. Remember to support your opinions by starting with the sentence, the reason I think this is. If you do not have the text printed out, um, you can pause the video here and read through the text so that you have an opportunity to discuss the important parts and supporting details with your partner. So go ahead and pause it now. Okay, as I read through this text, I saw um, several important parts. One is that um, Although Mrs. Buell was very kind with the Band-Aid, all of a sudden she turns again and in fact turns her back on Kate and seems to become mean again after um, she's helped her with the Band-Aid, but then Johnny came in the store and she seemed mean again. And that's, this really confused Kate um, to the point that she slunk out without once opening her mouth to say anything back to Mrs. Buell. Some of the supporting details that I noticed that helped um, uh, kind of in my mind decorate that important part, give more information, was that she growled at Johnny, um, acting like there everyone is used to seeing her, you know, make up your mind and take yourself off. And this again confuse Kate. Another description, des descriptive detail that Kate uses is that she lost her nerve. And then in the end she actually says that she didn't go back near the store for weeks. She's so confused she's just not sure how to respond to Mrs. Buell at this point. Is she kind or is she mean? 
So I'm wondering if in addition to underlining the important parts and details, if you also added um, some notes in the margins. This is what I added. Although Mrs. B seemed nice for a few minutes, she turned mean again. And I also wrote, it, wrote down that this confuses Kate and Kate snuck away. So I'm going to use that information when I go to write the summary at the end of our lessons. Tomorrow we'll continue going through passages, uh, the fourth, fifth, and sixth part of the passage. And so have those pages ready for the lesson tomorrow. Now is um, when we turn to IDR time. As you read your text today, your Just Right book, I want you to pause maybe in the middle or towards the end and share with someone else in your household a summary of what's going on in the story. I'll make an example for you by summarizing what I've read recently in the Birch Bark House by Louise Erdrich. Yesterday we found out that a little girl was found all alone on an island and uh, Voyagers discovered her and they um, decided actually to take them with her to their, where they lived. And turns out that this little girl is the main character of the story and her name is Omakaius. And what I learned in this chapter about Omakaius is that she lives now with her family and she's about seven years old. She lives with her family that includes a grandmother, her mother, father, an older sister named Angeline, a younger brother who is a bit mischievous, and a little baby. And she helps with household chores and jobs around their home. And one of the jobs that she's about to get ready to do, she doesn't really like, but she knows she needs to help her mom. She's going to help. They've stretched out um, a, an animal skin of some kind, and they're going to be tanning that skin. But um, right at the end of the chapter, the mom decides to send her off to go and get her scissors back from someone else in their village area. And Omakaius feels really excited about this errand. So I'm curious to see where that errand takes her. So until tomorrow, happy reading and happy summarizing. <laughs>